Hello students, in this lecture we will be discussing about the code optimization and uh, the code optimization basically is uh, the reducing the number of lines in a code will actually be the code optimization and the code optimization is the second last phase in the compiler uh, compiler process or the compiler phase it comes after the intermediate code generation and before the code generation phase so uh, the basic purpose of the code optimization is to reduce the number of uh, lines in the high level language code that we have written. Now you can see in this slide that the purpose is to reduce the number of lines in the code. The major chunk of the uh, program is actually being paid by, played by the loops. So uh, if we are able to reduce the number of lines in a loop or if you are able to reduce the number of loops, the number of lines uh, in the entire high level language code will be reduced significantly. There are basically two types of the optimization. One is the machine independent optimization and the other one is the machine dependent optimization. The machine dependent optimization means uh, uh, the, there is some architecture of the machine and we are going to optimize the code according to that uh, particular architecture of the machine. And the machine independent optimization means the op op uh, architecture of the machine is not going to play any role in the optimization process. Independently of the machine architecture, we are going to reduce the number of lines of the code. So in the machine independent uh, optimization schemes, we have four uh, techniques. One is loop optimization. Second one is folding. Third is redundancy elimination. And the fourth one is strength reduction. In the machine dependent optimization techniques, we have three different techniques. One is the register allocation. Second is use of addressing modes. And the third one is peephole optimization. We shall see the discussions uh, about all these techniques in the subsequent uh, slides. See, uh, the machine uh, in the machine independent optimization, the uh, major role is played by the loop optimization. And uh, the purpose of the loop, or loop optimization will be to, to reduce the number of lines written inside the loop uh, and reducing the number of loops and reducing the number of executions of a loop. So you must understand uh, all these three three things. First one is reduce the number of lines inside the loop. Let's say there is a loop which runs for a thousand times and uh, there are two statements written inside that loop. So it means that there are 2000 executions of the statements. If we are able to uh, re reduce the number of lines from two to one and the loop runs for 1000 time only, then the number of uh, statement which will now be executed be, uh, will be 1000 so from 2000 we have reduced the number of line of lines for execution to 1000 the second is uh, the reducing number of loops let's say we have four loops in, inside a program and if we are able to reduce the number of loops from th 4 to 2 or 4 to 3 so this will be a significant improvement the third is reducing number of executions of a loop let's say the loop runs for 1000 times and if we are able to uh, reduce the number of execution to 500 only so that will be a great improvement so this actually is the loop optimization there are uh, three uh, different types of the loop loop optimization named as frequency reduction or code motion second is loop unrolling and the third one is loop jamming see what happens in the code motion or the frequency reduction so it is about uh, uh, th there is a code and uh, the code is in, in in a loop. So that is actually in the high frequency range. And we have to move the code from high frequency range to the low frequency range. It means if we are able to uh, take the statement from the loop and we are able to make it out of the loop, we'll say that that, uh, that is the low frequency area. So earlier the line of code was inside the loop, it means the high frequency area and we have removed it from the high frequency zone to the low frequency zone. It means outside the loop, it becomes the low frequency area. So see uh, one, see with one example, there is a, a statement, uh, there is a line of code which is written i equals to zero while i is less than 5000 and then a equals to sin x upon cos x multiplied with i, i plus plus. Now if you see that the loop is running with a loop counter i and the value that is getting changed is i only. Every time with the execution of the loop, i is changing. So only variable uh, here is the i. 
for this particular loop. Now sin x upon cos x, the value of sin x and value of cos x, cos x is getting computed at every execution of the loop. It is actually unnecessary. Why should we compute the sin x and cos x every time even if the value of x remains constant throughout the loop? So what we are doing that the sin x upon cos x value has to be taken out of this loop. This way we will be, re we will be shifting sin x upon cos x from the high frequency zone to the low frequency zone. So see, see on the right side uh, uh, there is a, uh, the statement sin x upon cos x has been taken in some t variable. We are computing it once and storing the value in some t variable and then i equals to 0 i while i is less than 5000 a equals to t multiplied with i i plus plus. It means I have computed the value of sin x upon cos x once and then we are using that value for the later computations. So it, uh, in, in the code which is written on the left hand side, in the code that is on the left hand side, sin x upon cos x is unnecessarily getting computed at every execution of the loop. So we are moving this line of code outside the loop. So this actually is code motion or frequency reduction. Second method is the loop unrolling. Loop unrolling means we are we have to reduce the number of times the loop is uh, number of times the comparison is made in the loop. Fine. So uh, let's say on the on the left hand side there is a code given while i is less than ten, x i equals to zero and i plus plus. So what is happening here? Uh, the loop is running. Let's say ten times. Let's say the initial value of i is zero. So loop is running ten times from zero to nine. Now on the right hand side we have reduced the number of comparisons which are made by duplicating the statement written inside the loop. So x i equals to 0 i plus plus x i equals to 0 i plus plus again. So the value of uh, i is getting incremented two times inside the loop. So if the earlier value was 0 or the initial value was 0 in the next execution of the loop the value of i will be 2. In the next execution of the loop value of i will be 4, in the next execution the value of i will be 6 and so on so forth. So uh, earlier th on, on the, the code which is written on the left hand side, the jump was made of one, one uh, value only in the i. But here in, on the right hand side the jump are being made of 2. So the loop condition is getting checked for 5 times. So this method is loop unrolling wherein we are reducing the number of comparisons made in the loop. Third technique is the loop jamming. Loop jamming means that uh, we have to reduce the number of loops. Loop jamming is about uh, reducing the number of loops uh, written inside the high level language code. So let's see on the left hand side there is a code for i equals to 0, i less than 10, i plus plus. There is a nested loop inside this j equals to 0, j less than 10, j plus plus, x i j equals to 0. Now, Below this, uh, another loop is written for i equals to 0, i less than 10, i plus plus, x i i equals to 0. So now if you see that there are two loops basically, one is the nested loop and one is not the nested, nested loop. So we are considering that there are two loops here, two different loops or the two loops which are running separately. These two loops can be combined together. How can we combine these two? It is just that the statement x i i is written inside the nested loop, inside the nested loop. So you can see that the number of uh, number of loops has been reduced from 2 to 1. So if you are reducing the number of loops in the high level language code, it is called loop jamming. So uh, having seen the loop optimization techniques, we are going to see other techniques which are the machine independent optimization techniques. One is the folding. So folding means uh, there are some expressions which uh, can be computed as the compile time. So uh, you can replace the values of that by, uh, let's say that there is a constant addition of 2 plus 3 and then plus p plus c. b and c are the variables, so its value can be changed. But 2 plus 3 can be performed as 5 or 2, can, 2 plus 3 can easily be computed as 5. Okay. So folding means that if we have such additions, so such additions should be performed at the compile time it's itself. So replacing an expression that can be computed at compile time by its value. So this is folding. 
Another method in the uh, machine independent uh, optimization is redundancy elimination. Redundancy, el redundancy elimination means uh, if uh, an expression has been computed once, so we, sh we should be using that expression for the later computations. For example, a equals to b plus c, d equals to 5 plus b plus d plus c. Now you can see that here in, uh, in this expression d equals to 5 plus d plus b plus c, uh, b plus c has already been computed as a in the earlier statement. So if we replace b plus c by a here, we'll be reducing one arithmetic computation here. So here uh, in the red line, if you see, it has been replaced by or the earlier statement d equals to 5 plus b plus d plus c has been replaced by 5 plus d plus a. So this is redundancy elimination and uh, this redundancy elimination is done by the directed effect link graph. The same expression which has already been written once or has been computed one, once in the form of the expression that should not be rewritten, it should be reused as a notation only. The last one here is the strength reduction. A strength reduction means uh, uh, we have some costly operations. The, uh, multiplication and the divisions are the very costly operations. You must have uh, studied that uh, in your computer organization that uh, if you have to perform a 16-bit number multiplication with a 16-bit number, then uh, you have to perform the 16 cycles. So 16 cycles means it's a very difficult operation or a very costly operation. So we can replace the costly operation by the cheaper ones. As you can see here, in this example, b equals to a multiplied with 2. So if anything is being multiplied with 2, it simply means that in the binary representation, the number 0 will be added in the last. So if you can, if you, if you can do a left shift 1, so what will left shift be doing? That it will be adding a 0 in the end. Fine. So a multiplied with 2, b equals to a multiplied with 2 operation has been replaced by b equals to a left shift 1. Similarly, if you have to perform the division with 2, it will be eliminating the uh, last last digit or the least significant digit. So you can do by a right shift the bit, okay? a right shift 1 bit if it is divisible by 2. If it is divisible by 2, if, uh, you can right shift by 1. If it is divisible by 4, you can right shift by 2, fine. So this is the strength reduction. So you can just uh, read out these statements, replacing the costly operation by the cheaper ones. Multiplication and division are costly operations. Multiplication can be replaced by left shift and division can be replaced with the right shift. Here, uh, here we have another type of the optimization, which is al algebraic simplification. It is just the uh, case wherein we have to remove the trivial statements for example, if any number is added with a 0, the answer remains the same. Or if an, any number is multiplied with 1, the answer remains the same. So if we have such a statement in our code, those line of code should be removed. Fine. So this is all about the machine dependent optimizations. This is all about the machine independent optimization. Thank you.